Hi, I'm going to be doing a video about the three card spread that Maureen Oliver of Color Me Positive has created for us. And I'm going to show a little bit about the process that I go through when I am buying a journal interior from someone else. I look at the page and I want to see what it is since I create things using PowerPoint. I want to purchase things that I know I can easily convert. I know that Maureen and Sue of uh, Createful Journals, both of them produce things that work for me. Um, and also it's important for me that somebody is producing their books, one that are for commercial use and also have grayscale options so that I don't have to be challenged to turn it into gray. So this fits all of the checkpoints that I need to purchase this and be able to use it pretty rapidly. She has a little video here on the sales page telling you what's in it and then she also tells you what you can do. Um, so what we want to do is because we know that other people are purchasing these templates not just from our group but anybody that's you know looking at these or buying templates or doing anything on Amazon they're going to buy this so perhaps a hundred people 200 people may purchase this very journal and if they start producing these books how can we differentiate ourselves so that said the first thing I do is uh, obviously purchase and then download and then I'm going to go over to Amazon and do a search now I know that Tarot Journal itself is pretty popular um, one of the other things when you're searching Amazon it's also helpful to search in the incognito window um, amazon.com because that way you are not influenced because you're not logged in so it doesn't have access to what you've already looked at and I let's see Amazon oh sorry Tarot journal now I have my um, if I can spell I have that uh, Chrome extension that I have mentioned in the past and it's a really cool extension it's called Amazon you probably can't see it there let me move this over it's called Amazon extension suggestion expander I want to make sure that's all on the screen so you can see it so there you go Amazon suggestion expander and when I click on that and I go to manage extensions it takes me to my Chrome extension page and it's on but this other part of it allow in incognito and most of these apps have this uh, set to off so you need to go and and turn it on so that it will work in incognito um, I don't have all of my extensions work in incognito but the ones that I do my keyword research on I normally do uh, the other one I'm going to have is well yeah just this one is fine so when I'm in incognito right here and I look up Tarot Journal it gives me um, a couple of ideas it's not populating it as much as I thought it would and let's see if I can get three card spread okay it's not a huge thing and we can see that there's only 15 results so that gives me some good information that I know that it has very little competition um, I will find out a little bit more about how much it is researched but I just want to look at the covers for other people that have done three card or different spread readers and there's only one page of those so that's a little helpful and 
then I'm going to go um, and I'm going to just go to Google. I'll be in my regular window. I can do this in incognito as well. It's your choice. I have keywords everywhere uh, as my extension also on, on here. And so that gives me, when I type in a search term, it tells me that it's how much it's searched. Now this isn't searched as much as I thought because it's actually a very popular spread. But let's take a look at other things. So three card spread to row, um, that gets searched. Fun to row spreads is searched. To row spreads. So maybe in my book I might want to actually combine um, the three card spread with some other spreads in my book and not just have the three card spread. So that's a choice to do. Um, daily tarot card spread that's searched 50 times a month. Um, people search for three card spread tarot. So that might be what I want to perhaps name my book. Now I also have Merchant Words which is a paid program. I have it, I've had it for a long time um, and so I only pay nine dollars a month. Hang on just a second, I'll log in. And so instead of just Tarot Journal, I'm looking at Tarot Spread. So this one is for having Tarot Spreads for every day of the year. I'm thinking a three card spread is normally done for a weekly overview, so that would be like a 52 week um, Tarot Spread. So I would look at Tarot Spreads. I can search Amazon for that. Let's see what that says. I go to all here. I see that there's 499 results for Tarot Spreads, but it's also searched 14,800 times. So I might do Tarot Spreads dash three card spread as my title for my book. And then what I do is I will dig down, I will click on the word prime and I will also click on new and it's and I also will click on paperback. So that pretty much gets rid of one it takes me from all down into books and I see that there's only 134 results which means that there were probably games and there were older books uh, that are out of print now um, and if I get rid of actually out of stock, get rid of that even, I'm, I'm down to 133, but I still have 14,800. So I am definitely going to use the word to row spreads uh, for one of my keywords and possibly even in the title of my book. And it also might prompt me to add or do some other things with the interior of my book. So I'm going to look at some of these books here. These are all done by professional people. I don't see any create space books, which I'm, uh, this one here, this one is a uh, Kindle print book. This one was done last year. So this one is from uh, KDP prints. We can look at the inside of this one. This is a more of a how-to book. So that's cool. He's got a lot of words in there so mine won't really compete with that same one because his is more of a how do you do that with lots of explanation. Um, and many of these are sorts of guides. But I feel though that my book would actually still sit well in the spreads, um, especially if I define it as Tarot Spreads three card spread. Um, because I'm saying that this book is just the three card spread. So I think that is how I'm going to name this and or at least use this term. So that's how I do the, the research that way. Now what did we get inside of this uh, purchase that we made? We know that we have uh, 
the book in a variety of different sizes. So once I download the files, um, I have all my folders and whoops, let's see if I can move that there. And I look at all the different folders. So there's the three card spread there. And then there's the daily spread that she has. And I have, um, this is some something that's mine. I got, I downloaded the Tarot de Marseille, which is a public domain um, Tarot deck that is able to be used if I wanted to use that for covers. Uh, so here's my three card spread covers, spread images. And you'll find that when Maureen creates something, she way over delivers and gives you everything. So uh, on the covers, you get the PSDs, you get the PowerPoints, and you get the images. My computer's syncing images right now to Dropbox, so um, hopefully they'll all show up. And then in the spread images, gosh, you can use these frames for literally any book and all of these wonderful, beautiful borders that you get. So I will put them into a general folder uh, because I'll be using these on other books in the future, not just this book. So they'll go into another folder that I have that says frames um, and other things. And then she also gives you the PDF files here. So you are ready to upload these if you want to. And then the PNG files, which is actually what I'm going to use. She has the color and she has the gray ones here. And so I don't have to, I literally don't have to do any work if I didn't want to. Um, I am going to do some work because I do want to differentiate my book. So where is, um, let's take a look at the interior. So here's the three, uh, this is the one card spread. Okay, that's, hang on just a sec. Okay, so here's the three card spread. It's opening and syncing to my computer. Um, and a couple of the things that I will do here is take a look at how it's laid out so that I know the repetitive pattern. I can see that it repeats one, two, three, four, every four pages. So I can literally get rid of all of these things and just focus on these four pages if I want to make changes. So I probably don't want the butterflies because if everybody's using the butterflies, then that means everybody has the same thing. I will probably um, keep this page because that's of value. And then on these pages, I might, uh, this says outcomes and detailed interpretations. The other thing I would do is I will get rid of this front page because I'm committed to calling all of my journals, whatever is on this front page. So I immediately get rid of these, this page there, and this would become my front page because they never require you to call your book this journal belongs to. They make the assumption that that's just what the page implies. Um, I would add a, I would move this page down to between there and there, and then this would be my first page after the cover. So again, I'm going to focus on these four pages and I'm going to remove all the others. The other thing that I really want to look at, which is very, 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 very important, is I want to look at these guides. So this guide here is a half an inch in from each side. But you can see that this here is outside the lines. So I either would have to move every single component. These are fine. This one has to be moved in. And this one also is outside the line. And this one is as well. Now, if I was putting these on Etsy, nobody would care. But I'm putting them on KDP print and create space. And they very much care that I have my gutter and nothing goes outside the lines unless it is bleed. So in this particular case, 
I make a decision that if I want to move this, I can't sit and move each one of these components because that would be kind of a hassle. I can do it a couple of different ways. Whoops, see that that's one of the things that would happen. I can, whoops, there you go again. So I can go and I can group everything if I want to do that and then move everything over like that, which is great. And now I'm in the center. And I would do the same with this one here. And I want to get rid of that butterfly. Before I make any changes though, I actually want to make sure that I do a save as, and I save this document as my new working document in my working folder. And then I would start making the changes preserving the original one that I got. So I'm going to stop this video here so it doesn't get too long and I'm going to come back and show you what I've done to make some changes to this document just so that you can get a general idea of what I do. Okay, um, what I've done is I have gone ahead and I have adjusted, whoops, I'm at the very end, let's go up to the top. I removed that front page and I moved this one, this one, this one, and this one to make sure that they are all within my guidelines. The other thing that I've done is I have counted how many of these spreads there are. So how I'm going to differentiate my book is there's all, there's 49 separate instances. Well, there's 52 weeks in a year. So I'm going to make this a weekly card spread. And so what I'm going to do is make sure I have 52 iterations, not 49. So I just have to add four more, uh, uh, just from 49 to make it 52, so three more segments, um, to make it a 52 week. So then I can turn this into a three card spread annual planner or gratitude guide and obviously add opportunities in this one here, I think is what I'll do, is uh, add maybe another little box here. I got rid of the butterflies and I'll add another little box here. For myself, when I do a card spread, I want to know um, what the suits are. Uh, so I am going to perhaps take a look at adding some other informational box in this space. Um, or I'll just put an image here of some sort of placeholder. So I'll make some changes and I will come back again. What I wanted to show you is because we're using PowerPoint, it is so simple to make these changes. So I changed these four because those are the ones that repeat throughout the document. And I'm going to delete all of these like that. And now I have the four that I corrected. I'm going to make a save. I've already saved this as mine, so I'm not changing or altering the original document that I purchased never do that. Always do a save as and change it. So now I know that I have those four. Alt C, Alt V, and like that. And I think that's about 52. I'll go back and I will check. And now what I'm going to do is add information about the weeks between these pages. 
The other thing that I want to do also is I did that hack where I showed you how to make sure that I have my pages right and left the way that I want them to. So I drag this all the way over to the plus sign and then I pull this in if I can. So that I have just the two pages so I know which ones are my left and right. Now I do need to add one here um, just to imitate the cover being there. So I add that and that would be my cover. And so then I open the book and this is the first page. This is the back of that page. And so here's that. I actually want a page there, a place holding page, because I want each of the spread pages to open like this. And then when I flip this over, then that's on the back and then you're starting the next four of those. So what I'm going to do is uh, probably go in and make some adjustments so that I actually have my pages so that they are laid out like this. So maybe what I'll do is on this page, um, this is the back of this page, and this page, let's see, left, right. So this page sort of introduces people to the tarot spread. So maybe I'll put some sort of tarot image and say three card spread or, or just sort of have the image um, I'm concerned about putting any wording in these in this area here so that create space does not expect me to make the book called that. So I'll probably just put some sort of image right here um, and then move forward into the book itself and have a 52 week call it a 52 week journey through Tarot. So hopefully that has given you some ideas about how I look at the marketplace, how I look at the different books that are already being made um, by some of the people that are out there, how I then also look at some keywords to give me some ideas. Um, you don't need to have merchant words. Um, and then I went and I looked at a couple of different other kinds of words based upon what I found in my keyword research, Tarot Spreads is looked at 14,000 times. So going to Amazon and typing in Tarot Spreads to see what my competition is, this is a really, really underserved marketplace. So there's a wide open opportunity here for me to put my books not just under the one category of Tarot Journal, but I have a variety of different titles that I can call it. So I might make 10 books that are called Tarot Spreads, Three Card Tarot Spread, another book that's called Fun Tarot Spreads, um, and any combination of any of these searchable terms. Three Card Spread Tarot, I would go to Amazon and take a look to see how many books are called that. And so I would play around with a bunch of those different terms just to see what uh, came back. I also go and look at Google Images and I look at some of the other books and journals that are out there because I may want to add some other components to my book like I said. Um, Maureen did a great job but again if I want to differentiate my book from the others that are going to be out there then I may want to add some other pages um, that aren't in this particular book just to make it stand out. So I like to see what other people have done. So um, here's prompt pages uh, that they've added. Uh, what do you guard um, that you most treasure? So I could easily put some prompt pages in since it's going to be a weekly to row spread journal I could actually add uh, a component. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. I could actually add a component or change this and have one note page and then have another page that has uh, room for the seven days of the week so they could actually write down 
uh, little one lines uh, for each day of the week. So that's something I'm, I might think about doing uh, to make this sort of a Tarot uh, annual planner. See what I'm saying? I don't want to make it too much bigger. It's already 220 pages, and that's actually pretty hefty for a 6x9 book. So I really don't want to add more pages, but I can alter the pages that are already in here and maybe chuck this one out and put my own in. Um, so all of those things is what I'm toying with. So again, hopefully that has given you some ideas of how you can look at the marketplace, get some ideas, um, and see what other people are doing, and incorporate, don't copy, incorporate uh, that information into what you're doing. This is another really good one. If you're a person who does tarot, then you want to know the accumulation of the amounts of different types of cards that you get. Um, so this might be a tally that I put in the book that would be for the entire year so that a person could actually at the end of the year see the overarching types of cards that they get through the year. So that actually might be a fun thing for me to add into the book as well and it wouldn't take up that many pages. Um, so again, uh, hopefully this has been instructive for you and get going and get making journals.